Hello, my name is David Lloyd Davis and I'm Executive Director of the Friends of Cascade Springs Nature Preserve. Welcome to our green space. This, uh, this green space has gone through many changes over the years. It's gone from a Native American homestead to a Civil War battleground. There's also been a resort, and now it's a green space sanctuary for the local community. The Friends Group became interested in conservation um, because much of the park seemed to be um, falling into disrepair. And just from my personal experience, I live right beside the park. I've been battling uh, invasive species for a, a long time, probably over 20 years. And it's a very difficult and costly endeavor, so I know that it's an important thing to do. We wanted to make sure that we understood as much as we could, can about the, um, about the eco ecology of the park. And so when we had an opportunity to meet with Atlanta Audubon, which is now Georgia Audubon, we, um, we talked about some ideas on how we can improve the conditions of the park, uh, not just for the community, but also for the, the wildlife. The restoration work being conducted here at Cascade Springs is primarily focused on removing non-native invasive plants, such as English ivy, Chinese privet, leatherleaf mahonia, and by removing these non-native invasive plants, we're allowing native plants to grow. And native plants can better support insects to support birds and all sorts of other wildlife. One of the main restoration projects is we facilitate the removal of English ivy. On my left, we have trimmed English ivy, which is dead. And on my right, we have live English ivy. So English ivy is very common in the metro Atlanta area. And one of the things that makes English ivy detrimental to the environment is that it will actually climb up trees and it will take up, it will shade the tree and take up all the energy that the tree would normally get from the sun and it also adds weight to the tree and so over time the tree slowly dies and that extra weight from the English ivy pulls it down and causes it to, causes it to fall. So right now we're right at the uh, confluence of Turkeyfoot Creek and this other unnamed creek and north of us is the Cascade Forest. We've divided the park up into five forests. And the Cascade Forest is the forest that's closest to Cascade Road. And that was the area that we concentrated our restoration efforts on. We're pretty happy with the fact that we're, we're getting recommendations from the experts and, and following uh, best management practices to, to address the problem. So this is the spring house. We don't know exactly when it was constructed. There was a date on the back but the date has been sort of um, obscured uh, over the years. But this is, it's a spring building which is constructed to collect spring water. There's different opinions of what the building was, was, was for and why it was constructed this way with a, with a, a sort of a, a cavity inside. But essentially, um, people would walk into this area here where the reservoir is and they'd stand there and they'd, they'd interact with the spring water. And back uh, in earlier times, there may have been higher levels of spring water, but you know nowadays it's basically a shallow a pond that collects, um, you know, for most of the year. And then after some significant rain events, you'll see a lot more water in there. In 2018, we were assessing different types of projects that we could. Uh, you know, embark on and get funding for. And this project came up when we were doing our assessment because this area is um, it's wet all, most of the time because of the spring. And so when we looked at um, this as a project, it seemed like a no-brainer because it allows people to track across this area um, safely. It's ADA compliant and it was a relatively easy project to implement.
this is Cascade Falls, and Cascade Heights was named after this particular prop, this particular feature right here in the nature preserve. This is it's part of the Utoy Creek watershed. It's on Turkey Foot Creek, which crosses under Cascade Road and comes out here and drains down these beautiful rock formations into Turkey Foot Creek. And this is the reason why most people come to this property is to take a look at this fall, these falls. There's lots of wildlife. There's there's deer. Of course, you see a lot of deer in the evenings and in the early morning. Um, in terms of in terms of birds, the most interesting bird that I've seen is the pileated woodpecker. It's a beautiful uh, it's a beautiful bird with a with a red crown. It's it's kind of large. Um, oh, and the um, the barred owl. We saw we were able to see it was a huge bird. Um, and you almost don't notice it because it's still and it just sits in the tree uh, and it, you could easily mistake it for a branch or a part of the trunk and then there's the red-shouldered uh, hawk which are these are just some of the birds and, and uh, mammals in the park <laughs> What we hope to do is build off of the restoration work that's take, that we're uh, in the process of completing and take that information and compile it along with other information about the ecosystem and present it back to the community in an, in an educational way. And the way that we're planning to do that is through our, um, the, the development of an eco-museum, which is an interpretive center that we hope to build by adaptive, adaptively reusing the um, the pump house, which is over my right shoulder. Uh, the structure is an old structure and it contains an industrial furnace and we hope to use that and expand on it and re re reha rehabilitate the structure into a, a visitor center where we can talk about the different types of habitat and, and, uh, and landforms in the park. And so we're in the process of, of uh, looking for funding and planning to to complete that project in the next couple of years.